capacity analysis is a very important tool to assess the risk in meeting the projected part requirements as per program volumes. You may be asked to perform the capacity analysis at the start of the program to understand the capacity available internally or at supplier end to assess the sourcing decisions at the start of the program. Or you may also be asked to perform the capacity analysis during the product life cycle to understand the supply risk with change in business scenario or program volumes. And if you are directly involved in operations, then this is the key toolkit for you to map the capacity on monthly basis to the customer fluctuating volumes and plan actions proactively in case of constraints observed. But do you know the basis that goes into performing the capacity analysis in the correct way? Hello friends, I am Anurag Sharvasu and in this video, I am going to explain you the basis of capacity analysis with an example of capacity evaluation of a plastic injection molding process for your clear understanding. There are several templates which can be used for performing and mapping the capacity. You can select the one which goes best with you and your process. Before we start, please do subscribe to my channel if you have not already done and share it across so I create more videos just for you. So let's get started. I am going to take you through the template where we will evaluate the capacity of two parts. First we will start with filing the details. Capacity evaluation is a joint exercise between customer and supplier where both the parties need to share the correct data for meaningful interpretation of results. In the first step, as you can see, you have to fill the details with respect to the date when the evaluation was carried out, the supply details like supplier name, address. Now details about the program, for which program you are evaluating, which is the OEM for this. And since we are doing the capacity evaluation for a plastic injection molding process, here, for example, we have considered a machine, which is 450 ton machine. And in part number section, you have to mention the part details. So here we have considered two parts with part number 201 and 202 as an example. In this, you will mention their part name, the cycle time for these parts, how many pieces are produced per cycle and daily requirements for the part. Daily requirements of the part will come from the what is the requirement of the customer. So you can now go ahead to map the available time in this case. So moving to the next step here in this sheet, the blue color cell gets automatically calculated based on the input data you will have in the slide gray cells. In available time, the idea is to identify that what is the net available time available for calculating the capacity because there will be many losses occurring across the shift because of the breaks like lunch time, tea breaks and other breaks which can be due to meeting or 5s. So you will jot down all the breaks which are happening across the shift. So in this case, in our example, we have considered six days working, three shift pattern, total eight hours per shift. And we have 30 minutes as lunch time and 15 minutes each as tea break and other breaks. So that comes down to available time as 7.40 hours per shift. So this data, you will see that how you will use going forward to map the capacity. Now the next important point is to know the OEE for these parts. As you know, OEE is the product of quality rate, performance rate and available rate. So in this case, we have considered performance as 100%, which means that you are considering that the ideal cycle time and actual cycle time is same. So for capacity evaluation, performance rate is considered as 100% in this case and quality rate and availability rate you will calculate. So in this step, you can see you have to key in the data with respect to the total available time for the month, 
schedule downtime what is the end schedule downtime and these all detail will come from the supplier with the past history of the supplier with this particular machine you have to ask the supplier to provide the details so you can map the unscheduled downtime which has happened so in this case you come to know that the availability rate is 85 percent similarly you have to check with the supplier that how many parts were produced in this month and how many parts were okay how many parts were rejected so in this case for example we have considered 52,000 parts were produced out of which around 2,080 parts were rejected which gives us the quality rate of 96 percent so these are two important set of data availability rate as 85 percent quality rate as 96 percent so at this stage we have come to know about three of the key inputs which are required for calculating the capacity one is the net available time how much you have got second is the availability rate and the quality rate so now let's go to the main sheet where we will calculate the capacity okay let me explain you the format there is nothing like uh, some specific format has to be used you can customize it or use it accordingly which suits you best as I have already told you to explain you this concept uh, let's see uh, what the format talks about at the header if you see it talks about the details of the part which are going into this particular machine this is machine specific so here we are talking about 450 ton plastic injection molding machine so here we will map all the parts which goes into that particular machine okay for which particular customer these parts belong to shift per day hours per shift days per week cycle time pieces per cycle these all are self explanatory which i have also explained you while we were discussing on available time okay so in daily process capability is how much parts can be produced theoretically with these cycle time and available time okay so this uh, blue color cell will automatically gets populated once you key in the data percentage uptime is nothing but your availability rate which we have already calculated as 85 percent in the previous tab and percentage good is the quality rate which is 96 percent and which also we have already calculated in the previous step which will give us the process capability process capability is the number of parts which will now get produced because of the impact of percentage uptime and percentage good going to, uh, ahead in this uh, format you will have to see that what is the hours per week coming for this process for, for this part it will show like 24.5 hours will be required for this particular parts and for other parts like from 2 serial number 2 to serial number 11 how much time or hours per week are being consumed by these parts cumulatively in unused section this is a very important section because this uh, section will give you an idea that how much spare capacity is available if it is a positive number that means 45 hours is the spare capacity available in our case for this example now daily capacity for this part will be coming from the daily requirement and daily requirement as i have explained you earlier that depends on the customer requirements for example in this case we have considered part one and part two which are highlighted in red color font against which we are doing the capacity analysis as 200 parts is the requirement daily so based on that we are coming that 45 hours is the unused time now the most important thing while calculating this capacity is that the supplier should tell you very clearly that okay what are the other parts which are running on this machine and what are the volumes for those parts as you can see from serial number 3 to serial number 11 these are other customer parts it is not directly related to us but since we are doing the capacity evaluation of the machine we need to know what is the current load of the machine and that we can only know once we know this data that what are the other parts which are running in the machine what is the cycle time of those machine then only we will come to know that how much load they are occupying so with this you can see that i have jotted down in daily requirement section what is the daily requirement of each and every part once you input the data in this light gray cells automatically in the dark blue cells the data will get populated and it will show in the unused column 
what is the spare capacity available with the current load and the addition of the two new parts which for which you are doing the capacity evaluation and in the last column you can see it is showing green that means since your unused is in positive number it is showing that there is no capacity constraint just for sake of our example if i change uh, this requirement from 200 to say 1000 numbers okay here you can see that it is showing as red there is a constraint in the capacity and unused uh, column if you see it is showing as minus 53 so it is showing that there is an additional requirement of 53 hours if you are requiring this thousand numbers daily for part one so in this case there is a capacity constraint what you have observed during your evaluation and then the most important step you have to jot down an action plan you have to discuss with the supplier you have to get engaged with the senior management of the supplier and understand from them that what they are planning to address this issue whether they are planning to put up a new machine or you have to work with them to maybe consider resourcing of some of the tools related to you or what are the actions they are trying to do so that the capacity constraint what you are observing can be mitigated and the same action plan then you can track it for closure so friends uh, with this i have come to the end of this module hope it adds value to you see you next time till then keep learning keep sharing see ya